was. And I understand if I jump that. In the, if I jump in the pool, I, I thought, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, God, I missed okay, it. I think we're, we're going to walk. Right. Good luck. We're live. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Good evening, everybody. We'll call the meeting to order at uh, Ashley. Pretty much six o'clock right on the nose. If you would all stand and pledge allegiance to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business would be public input. Give a report now on the public input, and if you something comes in prior to inspector's reports, you could it'll be done. Something I remember. Um, been very busy. We've had a few big things going on. Still working at the house. Um, still investigating the dog that got shot. We had a break in at the shelter. I need, I don't know what I need to do, Tom says, you go up and fix, but I need to do something to make sure that they go up and fix my windows and my screens uh -huh. at the um, shelter. As far as I know, nothing was taken. I don't know why they went in there, but... Well, probably like you said. Either dogs or drugs, one or the other. Uh -huh. so, uh, uh, police were called, of course. I went to the police station, I took pictures, I have pictures on my phone. Um, I went to the police station, they did write a report, I had the report, I gave it to Roslyn. Um, yeah, broke into the windows, which I don't know how somebody didn't get hurt because most of my fences go right up to the windows, but no idea. There's no cameras there. Unfortunately, there's no cameras there right now. So. We had actually placed in Freetown at the transfer station one camera. There was two. Because we had somebody snip the lines on the, I don't know. There was, two, there was two uh, trail cameras with batteries working, so um, a lot of calls for, of course, it's getting towards that time that everybody's seen the feral cats, but don't realize that, now realize that winter's coming, so there was something to happen with the feral cats. I cannot take feral cats and move them. I can't take them and put them somewhere else. They have to be spayed, neutered, and returned to where they came from. That's not my law, that's the state law. Um, a lot of people don't want them back. There's not much I can do about that. If we get them small enough, if they had called me when they were real kittens, and we could send them to somebody that can socialize them, there is a chance we can put them in a the house. Normally they go for barn cats, but at this age now, you can't socialize them usually. They're just too bad. Uh, I think that's about it. Good. Any, any more dog bites? No more dog bites. Um, dog on dog or dog. There's a couple dog on dogs recently, but nothing <coughs> human. Okay. Well, we're, we're keeping like a track. Yes, so I have. We can see if there's a trend. Yep. Because I know we're we're up to like seven. What was it? It was seven or eight. Yes. Yeah. In the summer it seems uh, it's a higher uh, yeah. amount of bites, but. Uh, well, that discussion in the future will come up with the leash law. Right. And at least we can look at trends yeah. and say. What was causing it? Well, whatever it was. Right. And then if we get people to license their dog, it's better. It's better. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one thing. The leash R, I think, does something we probably should start working on for the yeah. annual town meeting. The, uh, it's probably a better time to have it than a special town meeting. Uh, we'll get more input. But I think we're at the point where it could be justified now that, uh, you know, we can't be having all these bites and nope. unregistered animals and, and not vax, not having been vaccinated. So it's just not a safe situation in town. So, okay, moving on to new business. Um, talk about Board of Health staffing briefly. Uh, the board received four applications for a historical event with a new health agent and the uh, first one ever, uh, at least the first one that had, had since we split the board and who will uh, assume the duties and responsibilities of what all our other ones were doing, uh, which is the correct tests and the 
uh, observation, uh, soil op observations, evaluations, uh, the food inspections. I'm not good yet. Um, oh, minimal minimum housing. Okay. So, did you say swimming pools? With them? Swimming pools. Yeah, we have. We have two pools, only two public pools in town, by the way. But, um, so we are moving forward with that. As a matter of fact, the, the new agent will be getting appointed this evening by the Board of Selectmen. Um, sometime within, I hope, the next six months, this board and its staff will be moving over to the Grange Hall, which was the old town hall many years ago and we'll be setting up an office in there, um, along with the Zoning Board of Appeals, the, uh, and the Building Department, and the Veterans Department. The Planning Board will stay here. Is there any more? I think that was it, right? I'm better. Yeah. So, as far as staffing, we, we do have a new office to set up, and. I just wanted to throw this out there that we were, uh, Rosalind and I have been talking about it uh, for the past week about setting up the Board of Health office and setting it up so it's a standard procedure with a standard operating procedure that if anybody comes in to do the job, uh, they can just follow what we have done in the past. And prior to that, with all these separate health agents, not that anything was falling through the cracks, but a lot of things were uh, not being passed on to an individual, perhaps, if I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to close it up more. Yeah, to close it out and follow the proper steps. So with that in mind, I, you know, you've set up an office, and uh, I, I suppose that Matt has set up an office. But uh, with the letter of interest of uh, Joe Cavallo, who's been helping us out, uh, we would we had thought about perhaps bringing him on as a consultant in the transition period to help with setting up the office. Um, you know, in the beginning. I know you have plenty of experience, and I don't want to uh, take anything away from you and Matt. But uh, I think um, you know if if we ever have to go to Swansea or they come here, uh, the two towns will be on the same page as far as procedure and so forth. So I'm not even sure it's going to happen that we they need them, but down the road, uh, uh, I think. The consultant may not be a bad <coughs> idea. And you'd also work as, I'm thinking, uh, that person would work as the backup as well. Correct. For, for, for whoever the new agent so. is to uh, go on vacation, whatever it is. So, so what, are, what are your thoughts? You think that's a. Um, that's something I think we would probably put on one of the agenda uh, next meetings. And discuss. Yeah, that, I would like Matt to be here <coughs> to discuss it. And, but, uh, uh, it, it Makes sense to have someone that uh, has already worked for the town and mm -hmm. uh, has, has uh, enough experience where we can rely on this individual to uh, to help us. Okay, we'll talk about it again next meeting when when Matt is here also. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll probably, when is the next meeting? September thirteenth. Yes. On the twelfth. September thirteenth. Okay. We'll talk about it. Yeah. <coughs> Item number two: Review, discuss, and act on Porter John requirements. Um, I don't know if you were involved with the two complaints at the time with the porta potties, one at the uh, the playground, and the one up at uh, the one at the playground. Our park and rec takes care of it. The one up at the pavilion, the Lions Club, takes care of it. Uh, we had a complaint a few weeks back about the condition, and they were disgusting. Uh, you know, right now they're cleaned, 
being cleaned once a week, or they were being cleaned once a week. I was told to went down here twice a week. Yeah, and that's the day that we got the complaints and and we followed up on it. Uh, that actually went to twice a week. At the time, it was our thoughts were to uh, see if we get the Lions Club to do it twice a week, which. Um, they were kind of hesitant to do that, I suppose, because of the cost of something. And since that time, I've taken it upon myself to go check out the porta parties for a few times. And um, I think the major problem with them porta parties is the fact that there's no urinal in either one of them. So, so people are not courteous. Well, that too. I didn't want to say that. But I think if there are urinals in them, I mean, I went in there, there was nice blue water, and it's only a little bit of paper. And uh, I'm guessing it was urine all over the seat and on the bench next to it and so <coughs> forth. So our thoughts at the time were to. Uh, get a regulation with a establish a regulation that required them to have a urinal in it and also to clean them twice a week during the summer months when the uh, usage was heavier but then as I passed was attempting to speak to Fox and Rex about it as they uh, maintain one the thought came up to build a frame structure uh, across 140 a month, have a portage on. The Lions Club has several talented people. We have our, t our people that could put in a septic system plus build. Uh, we have town electrician that would probably do it for, I mean, we have a lot of talent in town that we could probably put up a uh, small structure one for men, one for women, tie right into the septic system. So, if you think it's a good idea. I think that would be ideal if, that, if it could work. Um, just because I know that's the, the pavilion's for everyone's use when they, you know, they sign up. And, but when the town has functions there, my biggest concern when I'm doing the food inspections is, where are you washing your hands? Right. A lot of times they'll bring a portable stuff or they mm -hmm. say they're walking over. Uh, if there's a hand wash there to go with the bathroom, that's ideal. Yeah, I, I think, <clears throat> well, they're going to spec it out. I guess uh, Heidi's going to work with Tom Ferry and uh, the Lions Club and give us a cost estimate. And <clears throat> once we have that, and I'm going to publicly announce it tonight, I'd like to move forward and see if we could get a structure there with funding to come from the special town meeting. I think we have enough in free cash where we could probably do something like that. So, now, how, you, how would that work? Would they have open it at a certain time, close it at a certain time? Because I'm thinking if that was the case, somebody would have to physically go in there and check if there's no running water left going on. Because you might have people that, mm. whatever it is, just let it go and run, walk or, away. Or we, and we, we have keep, found needles. <coughs> yeah, you might have. Them. So you want to you want to close it at night. Yeah, you want to be able to have don't. somebody that's going to monitor it, where you're not going to have people stay in there all night. Yeah, well, they're vandalism. They're, they're probably walking the track till about ten at night, nine ten at night. So I, I suppose we could uh, secure it after that time. Especially if we have running water, that's a good point. So, um, but I would say even earlier. Just I'm thinking when we leave the Grange Hall. You know, well, when, when town hall closes, when well, you close at four, four thirty, kids, especially during the summer, kids are up <coughs> there until eight, nine uh, o'clock, and it's summer. the kid, it's the kids that use it more than the adults because hopefully yeah. the adults can wait a couple. You know, it's usually the kids. My daughter comes home because she won't use them anymore yeah. because they've been so disgusting. Yeah. So. But the thing is, yeah, uh, 
who who at eight o'clock at night closes it and mm. who does it. The, the thing is, you wouldn't want that open. No, after eight o'clock should oh, be. Or whatever time they right. decide. Open at nine. Close you're just, at eight, I think you're whatever. asking for even if people are just hanging out there, doing whatever. Right? Yeah. You see what they're doing to the bar down. Well, I think you can put like an automatic lock, like a key lock or something that you somebody opens it in the morning and lets it at. I don't see why. Five o'clock at night or eight o'clock at night, it automatically locks. Unless right. you have the key, you can't go back in yeah. there. Somebody might be in there. Well, they can get out. It's not <clears> that they couldn't, they couldn't get back in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in there all night, right? <laughs> the system here is like that. I don't know what Jim's thinking about for over there. Because yeah. you're talking about. It could be done. On the side right. Of I, mean, I think you could have an automatic water shutoff also. Right. So, you know, there's several things we can do it. But, uh, I, I myself think it'd be a great idea, and we could deal with, you know, with the details. Uh, but that's that's a good point. So we go in there and vandalize it, and you know, so probably eight o'clock at night during the summer, uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, something hours you work out something like that. Something we could work Swings out. By, so. I don't know. Just so I would ask that we table this uh, as far as. A new regulation at this time, but to until such time we see where we're headed with the uh, final structure. So if you want to, if you would like to make a motion to table, I'll make the motion to table this discussion. Okay, sit, sit down, second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And who do we have that's taking these part of John's away and replacing them and cleaning up? The different companies? I think they should. Same one. Same one. I don't know. I don't know if they fixed the one down here. The one down here didn't lock last time. I knew. I don't know if they fixed that yet. I told somebody on the playground commission. Hopefully. Not. Yeah, and, and yeah, <coughs> one of the problems we have in there, which creates a bigger problem, is uh, putting trash in there. Putting. Uh, diapers which yeah. shouldn't go in there because when they clean it, it, it won't. So it sounds a little disgusting, but I was, I believe the person that cleans it has to put on these big rubber gloves and go down and take out all the mm. uh, large bulky things that don't belong there. So I, w I would ask the people to try to help <coughs> us. I mean, they belong to you. Yeah. So I, I would ask that we try to refrain from throwing things in there that don't belong in there. Just I'm, gonna consider it. I'm gonna see about getting a trash can back there. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I think things are, you know, going in there and I saw, a, I think it was a diaper on the ground the other day, you know. Oh, you were there with me. <laughs> so, you know, uh, if we're gonna have a facility we should have what the people need to utilize, such as a trash can. I know why they took it out, but I think it should go back. Did they don't have a tote? Do they like a toter? The, the, the no, they took it. They had <coughs> they had a trash can. They were having problem with people coming and bringing their town trash well, and yeah. dumping it in there. So they made it so all you could fit was certain things in there. You couldn't fit a bag in there. You could only fit you know single things. Okay. And they were still getting things in there. Yeah. So they. I'm thinking anyway. if you secure a tote. Yep. And only have a cutout, mm -hmm. a hole. You're forced to just throw. You can't get your large bag in there. Right. And then we, what we did in other towns, actually chain it to, because we'd come and see everything. Think, we, right. used to, we used to have party drums tipped over until we chained it over to something. Right. And the, the people have to. We have surveillance cameras. I don't know why. It'd be <clears throat> kind of sad to put one there, but I know. you know if that's what it takes to. Uh, yeah. yeah. But anyway, okay. That'll be for another day. Okay, we have the under old business. We're going to have the third reading and finalize the revised Board of Health fee schedule. There you go, pal. I'm kind of tired of talking. All right. Yeah. <coughs> All right. So, uh, bakery was a hundred dollars. Uh, body art establishment two hundred dollars. Technician is a hundred dollars. The artist is a hundred dollars. Cabin Motel Lodge Permit is $100. Catering License Daily, $50 per event. 
<clears throat> Catering license yearly is $100. One evict license is $75. Disposal works permit, $200. Farm permit, $10 per year. Farmers market, $20, $25 per season. And the season runs between May 15th and October 15th. Food service permit temporary is $35. Food service permit yearly is $125. Illegal dumping to be determined. Uh, landfill sticker daily is $15. Landfill sticker yearly is $15. Dighton residents only. Milk and cream oleo is $20. Um, mobile unit trailer, $75. Maximum five, five month period. Uh, mobile units yearly is $125. Percolation test, $200. $75 each additional hold. Pool non-residential is $100. Recreational camp fee is $100. A reinspection fee for all violations is $50 each. Residential kitchens, $75. Retail store permit, $75. Excludes food service related. Sanitation construction, $400. Sanitation repair, $200. Sanitation inspection, each additional, or two, each additional, $100. First two inspections include, included in the permit fee. Septic hauler is $100 per truck. Sewer inspection is $50. Stable residential is $25. $25. Um, stable business, $50. Tanning establishment is $100 per year and $25 each device. Tobacco permit is $125. Well permit is $150. Uh, double fee for operating without proper license. Permit plus applicable MGL fines. All food related license permits include one inspection. Uh, Nonprofit food service vendor 50% of standard fee and a 501c certificate needed for nonprofit. All right, just right here though. All food related license permits include one inspection. They get two a year. Mm -hmm. Each one is required twice a year. Because the food code says that. Um, each establishment shall be inspected every six months. Yeah, where's the, uh, I'm trying to find the food service permit. Yearly, 125. Is that You're talking about the yearly, right? I don't know what that, um, if that's referring to temporary, because you're right, they do get two a year. Yeah, just to clarify, temporary event, depending on how, how long it runs, I could actually do the cow chip if I wanted to. I could follow up each day, if everything looks good, and just do that one inspection. Um, but when it comes to the food establishment and retail, food code specifically says every six months, all given, depending on mm -hmm. a little slightly over, a food establishment will be inspected. Well, under the yearly one, which is mm -hmm. 125, is that why it's, that could be why it's more money than 125. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For the two. And that's a food service establishment versus a, um, there's another one that says 75, um, retail store permit, 75. I think we probably should uh, just uh, make that small collection. Do you want to just take that out? Yeah, so you're alluding to, you're, you're saying because it says one, one inspection, yeah, which probably should just take it out. Yeah, because that's a given already. It's, it's two, right. two inspections. We can we can delete that yeah. sentence. And uh, yeah, it doesn't. It really doesn't have to say that because you don't you don't mention that in a um, installation of a septic. How many inspections mm -hmm. you actually get? Right. And it's it's three. So well, the bottom and the final so two. So should we read that one more time at the next meeting with Avocat? No, I think we can try to figure out a motion here. Yeah. 
We could make this effective September 1st, right? Yeah. Reason why we couldn't. Yes, but I would just say that um, effective September 1st, any new individuals applying would pay this fee. And then moving forward, anyone that currently has a permit, obviously, mm -hmm. when it comes to to renew their permit, then they're yeah, we're not gonna. Yeah, yeah. I'm we're just not saying, gonna yeah. charge anybody more money. Yeah, I'm just saying. In the middle so of they would know. Um, right. Okay, we we could say. Uh, effective, the license, and permit fees. Shall be effective September first. Uh, for new permit applications and we will exclude the all food related the sentence which reads all food related licenses permits include one inspection. How's that sound? Yeah. Do you want to second that? Yeah, you want to make it? I'll make, make, I'll make that so mood. So mood. So mood. Yeah. <laughs> so mood. <laughs> all right. So let's catch all that. I think so. Pretty much. Yeah, the the new license and permit fees will be of September 1st for all newly new applications for permits and it will exclude that one sentence so I'll step <laughs> down and second the motion all in favor aye aye opposed motion carries very good Yep. Okay. Next item of the old business <laughs> is to review, discuss, and act on septic installation protocol and procedures. Are we talking here just the cards? Um, the cards, and I had a couple of other questions, but we probably need to wait for um, Matt and. Yeah, and uh, and I think Todd should be able to participate in uh, yeah. future discussions on that. <laughs> so. And Kevin, uh, should make a motion to table item number two. I make a motion to table item number two, septic insulation protocol okay. and procedures. Step down, second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And if you would, another motion to table number three, which was to review, discuss, and act. Waste zero enhancing Dighton's pay as you throw trash bag proposal. Okay. I mean, I think we should all probably be involved with that one too. So I make that motion to um, table item number three on the agenda. I'll step down, second the motion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I'm trying to think if I did any little inspections. <laughs> Uh, we we did have uh, Joe's not here to talk about it, so I guess I can. Um, and we're we're working on taking care of them. Um, from time to time, a, we receive phone calls regarding overgrown properties uh, with weeds or tall grass or trash, which is another matter, but. Primarily this time of the year, it's due to tall grass and people. That usually happens in abandoned or vacant homes and nobody is uh, maintaining the property. So it ends up, number one, it ends up an eyesore. Number two, it ends up an area for uh, rodents and other vermin, if you will, to hang out in the tall grass. And if there's neighbors around, then it, then it creates a uh, public health nuisance. So uh, we've had a few of them. We've sent out correction letters. Uh, some were taken care of right away. Others were still uh, trying to come down with the owners or we're waiting to get it done. Uh, we've had a few minor issues of uh, improper disposal of mattresses and that's furniture that and was corrected, I think, that yeah, one. those were corrected. Um, just for anybody's information that may be watching, we, we do have a, a 
bulky guy to pick up twice a year. Uh, you generally once in the spring, once in the fall. Uh, our highway department goes around and picks up these items. Uh, as in the past, if you remember, uh, we sell stickers at Town Hall, either $10 or $5. You can place on the item and put it out on the road and it will be picked up. Uh, it's not costing you anything extra for this. The price of the sticker would be the same price you're going to pay at the transfer station. Uh, it's just for the convenience of getting it out there. So, <clears throat> other than that, we do not have a mechanism or a procedure in place to pick up any type of furniture that's left out on the side of the road. Uh, it has been happening with tenement houses in town. I guess people think they can just put their used stuff out there, or, uh, but after contacting the owner of the property, those were taken care of. So, uh, you see, sometimes people put out something and, and they write free on it. You might get lucky and the person takes it away, but uh, yeah, you can put it out there like for a week or something. Yeah. But after three weeks or a month, yeah. let's then you face know, it. Yeah, it's time, probably, to, it's time to go to the transfer station. Nobody's going. Gonna, nobody's going to pick it up. Yeah. So uh, if you would, especially after if you put a piece of sofa out there or some kind of recliner and it, and it rains for three or four days on it, then probably nobody's really going to pick it up. Yes. So um, tough to get rid of furniture out there, but uh, you know you want to give it a shot for a week. That's fine with us. But if it stays out there longer than that and we see it, uh, you will be ordered to remove it. Consequences could be a fine for littering. Plus, we would remove it at your expense. Uh, and pay the transfer station fee plus the hourly rate or whatever it costs for our highway guys to go get it. So the simple solution is don't put it out there if you can. Or don't, please don't leave it out for a long period of time. So, what else happened? I'm trying to think. I, I, had, I had one that um, we wrote a correction letter. I wrote a correction, uh, correction letter to uh, an individual on uh, Ple Pleasant Street. Uh, a large brush pile was removed, and that's uh, so that's one. Oh, Park, Park Street. Well, it's, yeah, it's the Pleasant Street, but oh, it's Pleasant Street. That Park, yeah. Park Ave area. Yeah. Uh, so. Right now, the Board of Health has no outstanding violations in that area, so that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, we don't know what's out there until you call us. And after we get the call, we'll do our best to try to rectify the situation. Um, we have a situation right now very serious, and uh, we just became aware of it. But some of the neighbors were aware of it for some time. And uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it's a tough situation. We're still dealing with it, working with it. So uh, I don't want to speak too much to it right now. So, um, you know, but we found out about it because we got a call. Otherwise, you know, uh, it would have continued. So, and that's the same with uh, anything, animal control or whatever. Um, you know, she's, our ACO is available 24 seven, it's fantastic. So I, I give you big kudos for the job you do for the town. So it's, uh, appreciate it. Are we done with reports so? I don't know. I, I guess well, so. I, I did. I, I, the state got a call about 32 William Street again. I was out there yesterday with the state inspector. Nothing's wrong out there. They saw a dairy cow that looks skinny. And unless you know cows, dairy cows look skinny because they use all their energy to produce milk and stuff. So they always look skinny. So there's nothing wrong out there. But um, we have been out there once again. I thought uh, they got rid of. They didn't get rid of anything. Oh, it's I just, thought they did. No, it's just that now they have houses 
So, like, they st I thought they got rid of the alpacas, but they have a, now a house that they no, sort okay. of hang out in with the horses and the donkey. Uh, they have a lot of goats. They've opened their house uh, once a week, not once a week, this week. They're opening the house on Saturday to let people come in and play with the goats and oh, right, so walk around the farm, yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, so they have a lot of baby goats. They've lost all their chickens. One of their own dogs wiped out their chicken flock. Oh. Um, and they're trying to rearrange a whole bunch of things with their dogs. Um, so, I mean, everything's fine there. The cow is fine there. And you do your yearly inspection? Yes, we, I go out there yearly. So they I know was, you're coming, so... Well, they... I don't usually call them. Uh, there's some farms that I... I don't call any of my farms. I just put it out there that, I'll, you know, from such and such time to such and such, such a time, I could be there. If I go on the property and I find a violation, I leave and call them and say, you know what, I need to come out and inspect, yeah. it, you know, when you're there so we can go over the violations. Okay. This is all the garage we got. Um, that and Any food recalls? Yes. And then we have the, uh... We have the, um... I think that's... Hazardous Waste Day, right? Announcement. Oh. <laughs> What's the announcement? I'm sorry. No, this was, uh... This is rather important because this, we had an incident where an individual was out 3.30 in the morning walking the dog and Bristol County Mosquito Control went by, sprayed her. So um, we, after we received that, uh, Bristol County Mosquito Control was called. And I don't know why they didn't didn't send us this information in the first place um, until after the fact, but it, I'll, I'll read it. And um, this has been posted on Facebook and the town website, and so everybody's aware, but we're going to read it. The Bristol County Mosquito Control Project makes truck-based ULV applications in the town of Dighton, typically on Wednesday mornings, weather permitting, between 2 a.m. and sunrise. Due to high request volume in some towns, not all areas of town are completed in one day and may require additional applications the following weeks to complete all requests. To determine if your specific street is on the schedule for the following morning, please call our answering service line 617-582 Six two one eight after three o'clock p.m. the evening before your town's scheduled day. In addition, while Snarl virus triple E positive mosquito pools increase mosquito populations, a human slash horse cases may increase spraying frequency or change application day. To exclude private property from pesticide applications, please visit the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources for information on pesticide exclusions. Uh, to make a spraying request, you can call 508-823-5253, or the fax is 508-828-1868, and finally, our request, this is a email address request bristol mcp at comcast.net and uh, so I've, there's a few extra telephone numbers and long uh, email addresses but uh, th again this has been on the Dighton website and Facebook pages so uh, I guess it's typically Wednesday morning uh, we did have, and I, I think we mentioned this last week, I don't have a report for this week, but uh, there was a case of uh, West Nile virus in Swansea, neighboring town, so, uh, but our our risk level is, what do you got? That's the case. Okay. So 
minor alert. Um, does say the risk of human West Nile virus transmission is highest in August and September. So if you would use personal protective measures to avoid mosquito bites. Um, we've gone over that many, many times. Um, best, I think your best advice is to try to stay out of the dawn and dusk period of time. And if you do go out, wear uh, long sleeves, long pants, and put on your DEET some type of mosquito spray, whatever works, and uh, you know, so you can protect yourself. Awesome. It'll share. Okay. No, 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 Mad Haver, M-A-D-A-H-A-V-A. -A -A. Natural sweeteners issues allergy alert for undeclared milk in its 13.8 ounce MMM chocolate chip cookie mix. Mad Haver Natural Sweeteners of Longmount, Colorado is recalling its 13.8 ounce box of MMM, MMM chocolate chip cookie mix because it may contain undeclared milk. People have, who have allergy or severe sensitivity to milk run the risk of serious or life-threatening allergic reaction if they consume this product. That's all I got. Okay. Okay. Lighthouse Incorporated issues allergy alert on undeclared egg and products. Uh, Lighthouse is voluntar voluntarily recalling a limited quantity of its OPA, whatever that is, uh, by Lighthouse Ranch because it may contain <coughs> undeclared eggs. The FDA has been made aware of this recall, which is limited to one production day from a single manufacturing location. Uh, there were 742 cases of 11 ounce glass bottles that were distributed to retailers and locations nationwide. Uh, the best use by date can be found on top of the bottle, uh, which is best by October 24, 2017. So if you know what that is, probably best not to buy it. So it's, uh, uh, Marathon Enterprises, a Bronx, New York establishment, is recalling approximately well, 7,196,084 pounds of hot dog products that may be contaminated I know, with extraneous materials, specifically bone fragments. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food Safety and Inspection Service announced today the beef and pork hot dog and sausage items were produced on various dates between March 17, 2017 and July 4, 2017. A uh, number of products are subject to recall. Uh, let's see. Pork was brought quick here. Well, this will be here for your viewing anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, they're posted uh, in the corner. It's uh, that's a big time frame, from March to July. Yeah, All that processing. Yeah, that's why it's 7,196,000 pounds. And a hot dog tonight, too. I don't know. <laughs> announcements. Want to do announcements? Sure. All right. Okay. Trash bags, shop disposal containers, and recycling stickers. 
all for sale at the Board of Health, the Board of Selectmen's Office, call 508-669-6431 for more information. There are vacancies on the Historical Commission, Land Use Committee, and Capital Outlay Committee, also Community Preservation Committee, and an opening for a Historical Commission representative, and a possible opening for an at-large member. Zoning Board of Appeals is accepting applications for a new member. The Board of Selectmen is now on their summer meeting schedule. Normal meeting schedule will resume on September 6, 2017. The Dighton Lions Club Food Bank distribu distribution will be September 23rd from 8 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Uh, a.m., sorry. The clerk's office would like to remind all appointed individuals to come and be sworn in as soon as possible. And the Inn Council of Aging will be holding a food clinic on October 26th in the lower level of Town Hall from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Can Thank we you just Kevin. announce the, uh, the hazardous waste thing? Oh, I don't have that. Oh, yeah, November 4th. The only thing with that that needs to be changed is the ability to, to take the okay. away. In case you missed it last time, we will be holding our Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day on Saturday, November 4, 2017, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Dighton Transfer Station on Tremont Street. Uh, this year we are voted to not ask for a ten dollar fee per car uh, to help defray the cost uh, this year it'll be all free uh, for all town residents uh, just as a reminder pretty much everything is ex is uh, ex going to be accepted except latex paint uh, your latex paint uh, being water-based you can dry it up with new shredded newspaper, sawdust, or just leave it out in the sun if we ever get a summer, and uh, it'll dry up. And then you can put it right in your trash once it dries up. Um, well, I'll be we got plenty of time. Uh, what do I bring from the workbench? Oil-based paint, stains and varnishes, wood preservatives, paint strippers, thinners, solvent adhesives, lighter fluid, aerosol cans. And from the yard, poisons, insecticides, fungicides, chemical fertilizers, weed killers, mothballs, flea control products. Uh, from the house, rubber cement and airplane glue, fiberglass resins, photochemicals, chemistry sets, furniture floor and metal polish, oven cleaner, drain and toilet cleaner, spot remover, rug and upholstery cleaner, uh, hobby supplies and auto supplies. From the garage you can bring your food fuels, gasoline, kerosene, motor oil and filters, engine degreaser, brake fluid, carburetor cleaner, transmission fluid, car wax, polishes, driveway sealer, roofing tar, swimming pool chemicals. We'll be accepting propane tanks, uh, less 20 pounds and less will be six dollars each over 20 pounds will be twenty four dollars each uh, Some special instructions Leave the materials in original containers tighten caps and lids Sort and pack sort and pack separately oil oil paint pesticides and household cleaners pack containers and sturdy upright boxes and pair with newspaper, never mix chemicals. Pack your car and drive directly to the site. Never smoke while handling hazardous items. What not to bring? Empty containers, trash, commercial or industrial waste, radioactive waste, smoke detectors, infectious and biological waste. <coughs> this is kind of... Uh, Oh, propane cylinders, okay, or oh, pressurized cylinders. When we say propane tanks, we're talking about the barbecue style pretty much. Uh, 
Don't bring any ammunition, fireworks, or explosives, fire extinguishers, uh, prescription medicine, syringes, and waste containing PCBs. Uh, again, any questions, call here at 508 669 5182. And it'll be held again on Saturday, November 4th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Step down, second motion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Good night, everybody. See you in two weeks. Thanks again, Steve. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just quick.